Today I wanted to review with you three different document types that are very heavily used dealing with integration. Uh, focus on integration because that is an area where I spend a lot of my time. I work on a lot of different integration projects. I have experience working on all three of these types. There's two of these on here that I actually enjoy very well working with. And I'll give you my input on that as well. But let's get started. So we're going to start off with the first document type, which is going to be JSON. So this is JSON on the left. By looking at it to just kind of these square brackets, this is considered an array. And we have different objects, right? So we have one object, we have two objects, you know, three, and so on and so on. Um, JSON has a name value pair structure, right? So the first being the name, and then of course the second one being the value. So if you were to, again, extract these values out of the JSON file, you know, there's a, you would have to end up either calling the name um, by the actual name itself. In this case, let's say email, or you will call it through the index, the placement, right? So in this case, name is a, is a first index, which is zero, and email is the second index, which is one. So you will call it by the, the number index, right, being one. Again, that's a different video. I don't want to go too detailed, but just kind of give you a visual. You kind of see on how it's structured, right? This, what you see here, is the equivalent uh, for an Excel of being this. You have your four headers, right, in Excel, and then you have your rows, right? So I, I, didn't, I only copied three, two on here, but, you know, you, you get the, you know, this hopefully makes sense to you, I would hope. Uh, let's see it. Uh, freaking mouse is going crazy right now. Actually just got a new mouse. Um, may make a video about it. It's actually pretty cool. But again, so either way, take a look at it. So those of y'all who are used to dealing with Excel, you know, this is the equivalent of this, right? It just happened to be this is in a JSON format. Um, very heavily used for, you know, RESTful APIs. So those of y'all who are getting into web development, you're going to be working with APIs. This is a file type, you know, a data type that you're going to be working with. I actually enjoy working with JSON. I, I like it. Get familiar with it. It's easy. It's nothing complex. This is a very basic structure. There's a, there's a lot more complexity that could go along with it as well. So again, this is just a basic structure, kind of get you familiar with, with JSON. There's some more complexities to it. Again, you could have um, nesting where you could have some array within an array, within an array, object within an array, and so on and so on. Again, this is just trying to give you a basic overview. So next, we're going to move to XML. XML, you're in the middle one. Now, those, any, any of y'all that are familiar already with HTML, XML will look very, very familiar, right? Because same, for the most I have same structure, you're dealing with tags. You know, you have a starting tag, right? Name, they have ending tags with the, um, with the slash. So it's, again, very, very same structure as HTML. Now, those of y'all who do not know HTML yet, um, by all means, it's very easy. There's nothing complex about it. You know, just go and Google it. You'll get some, some insight of what HTML really is. Again, if that's something that y'all want to know, I'd be more than happy to make a video. But honestly, there's really no need for me to do that. There's so much um, resources out there already on YouTube and Google, etc. So just, you know, go Google it and you'll figure it out. Um, so let's start off with XML. Again, these two are kind of the same examples, right? So again, just like the way we have our array, our square brackets to identify our, our array. Well, in XML, we have a, a, a tag that's called records. As you could tell, 
you know, this is pretty much the equivalent of my array for JSON. So that's kind of how this it's, it's structured, right? Um, if we look inside the, the, the records um, tags, we have a record tag. So again, the record for one, so this is one record, same thing, this is the equivalent of the Excel sheet that I had earlier, which is one line, right? So that's kind of the same structure. It happens to be in XML. And you have your names, email, cell, you know, phone number, you know, whatever other tags uh, you have it in, the, you, ha you will have in there. This is the basics right now. So I want to, I want to emphasize what I'm showing you all, everybody right now. This is, this is very ideal for people who do not know. This would get you the, at least the basic understanding of JSON XML. There are some other attributes associated with it, right? Just to kind of give you an example. I don't want to go into deep, deep into this video. You could have attributes as well. Could be something like process date, right? Or again, I'm just making up stuff, but you know, just kind of give an example that kind of what it, it could be something of that sort. And it could live in the form of an attribute um, instead of living within its own tag, right? Instead of having a tag. Um, process date just kind of right so you could have a tag just like this and it could be the process date or you could have an attribute and it could live within there which is, would be part of your whatever tag you wanted to be a part of again that just gives you an example right i mean these two work the same way there's some benefits of using attributes compared to tags. Again, that's a different video, not for this video. Purpose of this, just kind of give you a basic understanding. Uh, I'd be more than happy to give you, to produce a video with more detail if you're interested, but y'all let me know, right? Uh, so the third one, this is called, this is an X12 EDI format file, right? So just to be more specifically, this is really a 1214 EDI X12 file. But just kind of give, just kind of review over a little bit of X12. So X12 have been, has been around for years. I'm talking about, it, it's very, it is a very old, old uh, file type and it's used worldwide. And I think because of that is one of the reasons why you're not going to see this go away. Now, I think what, just to kind of be clear as well, what makes this different than these other ones, these have no structure, right? Now, what I mean by that is you build your own application, right? You're going to, you're going to build your own, you know, SaaS application and you're going to build a, um, some APIs, right? To go along with your application for your external users or customers to be able to tap into. Now you as the developer, you're going to create your own schema, right? For your API. So let's say you're using JSON. So you're going to have JSON schema that you're going to build. You're going to determine X12 is not, does not work that way. X12, a little bit different. X12 is actually a format that is being determined by an, by an organization. There's an organization that determines these file formats, right? So it's all being predetermined for you. So people that use it, like Amazon uses X12, Walmart. Uh, again, so a good example would be uh, A67, right? So A67 is a product transfer and resale file. So a lot of distributions you know, that sell product, you know, transfer product and so on. They use this file because it, there's a standard behind it, right? And because there's a standard, it makes it a little bit easier when you're dealing with different trade partners because every trade partner has their own system. And now it becomes more of a, well, how do you know that, hey, this system needs this data? 
So in order in order to kind of streamline the process when it comes to you know transmitting data, you work with a standard, and the standard says, okay, I need a product, I need a quantity, I need specific, you know, think of it like where is it coming from? It's called sender IDs. Uh, you know, you need a, a receiver, a received ID, receiver ID, all of these different ID that kind of help identify who you're communicating with, you know, what time did you communicate with them, uh, what version. So inside the file, just kind of go a little bit, you know, kind of tap into it a little bit. You have the different versions, right? Like the 410, that's a version. So whatever tool that you're using, whether it be like a BizTalk, a Mapforce, I mean, there's different types of tools, right? You could use, you know, you'll be able to read some of these values up front, and based on the value, then you could apply certain processes, right? If it's a 4.10 version, then a pro, you know, use the 4.10, you know, um, logic, right, to be able to read that file type. And so again, I don't. Even though I hate it, I don't think it's bad necessarily because there is benefit to it of creating the standard when you're dealing with EDI. Um, that's the purpose of it. What, by looking at it, just kind of give you a good, all of these that are in yellow, these are all considered segments. So every segment represents something. Um, again, I don't want to go too, de de too detailed into it because segments are very... You have some standard segments like ISF, kind of think of it as your header of your file, has very high level header information that says, I'm the person, right? I'm I'm trade partner A and I'm sending my file to trade partner B. Trade me being trade partner A, I'm gonna include my identifiers in the file, in the header file. So like that, it will let trade partner B know that, hey, I send them a file and they know that it came from me. And then of course you have other attributes to know like which, what file, like what kind of file it is, right? The EDI comes in different files. You don't determine it by the file name normally. So you could read it by these other segments, ST. In this case is a 214, you know, um, and then of course you determine by the version and then like everything else in between is really more so your, um, the attributes that you're gonna extract. You know, all of these segments represent something. They represent some sort of, let's say, a product, like a shipment ID and some sort of, you know, in this case, you're dealing with city, state, and, you know, country, and, you know, some other attributes. Again, not, I'm not going too detail into that, but that's kind of the, you know, just kind of from a high level, that kind of gives an, an overview of that. Um, if you haven't got there, there's a good chance that you may one day be using this file, I will tell you right now that it's without a doubt X12 in my opinion is a steeper learning curve than dealing with JSON and XML. Maybe because when I first started learning programming, you know, some years back, I learned JSON right away as well. Um, and of course XML, I learned not right away, but I learned somewhat, you know, a little bit after because I was doing some web scraping and some other stuff of that sort. So I got familiar with HTML and, you know, XML came in the picture and because I was using XML libraries to kind of do some of the work. And so I got familiar with it, right? So J EDI is something that I actually just learned. I have always known EDI, so it's not like EDI is new to me. I have always known what it is. I have always been familiar of the basic structure of it but I really had never worked with it until probably two years back. And that is where I started getting very, very deep into it, like learning all the in and outs and learning the right tools, right? The right software. Um, and I would strongly recommend not to code it yourself, unless you know for a fact that you're just dealing with one trade partner, maybe one file, and that's it. In my case, I deal with many trade partners many different versions of X12, whether it be 410, 510, the list goes on, different types, and this one is 214, 867, 204. I mean, I'm just, again, the list goes on and on of different ones. So because of that, strongly recommend to have some sort of mapping tool 
to help on the extraction of these um, extra files. But hopefully this is beneficial. Hit the like button if, if this video was, was helpful to you and go ahead and subscribe as well. And again, very interested in your comments and let me know, let me know what you think.